you're at one with the world right now and you hear its heartbeat. It's a part of you. Roll a 2d6. Oh shit! You failed! This sounds like a perfect time for a bond. <laughs> Your head is permanently a dodge now. No! Oh, no. <laughs> By the way, you can mark EXP for this fail. Uh, can't? Man. You can. Uh, you, you mark EXP for this. So, goddamn. you get the worst outcome. Fuck. Let's oh. see what's gonna happen. Oh, no. the, the night is gonna go without any problems. I assume that O'Sullivan's sleeping somewhere nearby, keeping an eye on the cocoon that totally is in, but nothing bad happens during the I'm night. I'm totally doing both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Good job, O'Sullivan. So, come morning, you guys probably wake up and you're gonna notice that the two evil people of the party are missing, <laughs> which is probably very disturbing. Wait, who's the or other great. evil guy? Well, Taliwa and O'Sullivan are the evil ones, so... How... what? <laughs> Way to spoil things, DM. <laughs> I'm not evil, I'm just misunderstood. Yeah, exactly. So what are you... so what are the rest of you guys when you wake up She's doing? like Illidan. <laughs> mm, mm, no, you don't want to be like Illidan. Illidan is great, shut up! <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just Ale Alexander's like putting on his stuff, he gets ready, he puts on his bandolier, he's checking through it, he's like, mm. he's a bit paranoid now since that guy was talking about getting Rashad, about getting them for Rashad, and then something snuck in his room y yesterday, so, hmm. <clears throat> he's gonna turn to Plex, so he's gonna go, you, uh, you finished that book yet? Yeah. Oh, well, what did it say? Uh, it was boring. When the robot uh, was bored? Really? The he then gives you another book. Here's a translation for you. You read another book? Yes. Of a translation? Yes. Ash, do you remember wow. when he read a book in two seconds in front of you? Yeah, but he's more impressed. I he's didn't like, write it. I didn't have the materials. Plus, that method is way too crude and inefficient. Wait, how did you? How did we let it change? Uh, his eyes suddenly flare up, and he burns a few nose hairs on your nose that are sticking out. Why? <laughs> like, he basically wow. burned uh, the letters on the pages with a laser. Mm. Huh. Okay. By the way, since he burnt off the hair that was sticking out of your nose, you now smell like uh, disgusting shit. So, yeah. If you ever smelled burnt hair, it's <clears throat> terrible. That's right, I was going to take a shower anyway. But, but yeah, he's he's like, huh. He opens up the book and checks it a little. So, I'll read this during breakfast then. Uh, the book uh, is uh, actually a personal diary of an alchemist. Uh, there's not much you can uh, do with the book because some of the materials described there and stuff uh, you have absolutely no knowledge about. Like, this is a high level alchemist who knows exactly what he's doing, so he's not like doing this as a fucking tutorial. On the last pages, um, some things that you managed to pick up from the book are that now you know how to make uh, healing potions, right? That is a skill. You know how to make healing potions, <laughs> though it's very time consuming and you need a lot of materials. And uh, because you don't use magic, that's why it's a lot harder for you. And you also mm -hmm. now know how to strengthen already existing uh, health potions and make them make them more effective. Healing potions. So this diary, like um, at the end, there's some personal notes that the alchemist kept about uh, some people and uh, what kind of help they need. Basically, uh, he seemed to be hand, uh, to be interested only in healing and stuff that relate to healing and such and i'm gonna like where where's the rest of it mm -hmm. uh give me a sec there was something else something else hmm, hmm. yeah there we go uh he has written uh something 
about uh, his uh, philosophy and his way of life at the end, if you're interested and wanna hear that. Do you wanna hear that yeah. or do you wanna just ignore that stuff? Yeah, I might as well Basically it's just since... background. Yeah, I might as well read it as I'm eating. Okay. It's like I'm waiting for everybody else to come down. So, so what you read at the end stuff. of the diary is uh, basically his thoughts and stuff. Uh, and the stuff that stands out is a small text about uh, his work as an alchemist. And what he writes down is, Happiness translates in my work as an alchemist. To make a scientific breakthrough. To look at a formula everybody has seen countless times and improve it. To create a new invention. As an alchemist, that is the greatest pleasure in life. But pleasure is short-lived. It can last a minute, an hour, or if you're a sexual beast like me, an entire night. My point is that it peaks very high, but the next time you want to experience that same feeling, you have to try twice as hard. It's like a drug. You have to keep doing it because it in insulates itself. You have an enemy who is an alchemist, leave him to his own devices. His pursuit of pleasure will one day get him killed either in a freaky experiment or by a monster he created. No matter what kind of pleasure you seek, it's always of the same quality. On the other hand, is joy. And joy is the thing that doesn't go as high as pleasure in terms of your emotional reactions. But it stays with you. Joy is something you can recall. Pleasure, you can't. So the secret is that even though it's not as intense as pleasure, the joy will last you a lot longer. I have been blessed with a lot of things in my life in terms of joy. The friends I have will always be there no matter who I am. But I am fortunate enough to experience even more joy through my work as an alchemist. Countless families rely on me daily for help and uh, advice and, vo and through my work I am able to help them, restore their smiles and accept their heartfelt gratitude. Joy lasts forever. Pleasure is purely self-centered. It's all about your pleasure. It's about you. A selfish, self-centered emotion that's created by self-centered motive of greed. Joy is compassion. Joy is giving yourself to somebody else or something else. And it's the kind of thing that is, in its subtly and low, uh, lowness, more powerful than pleasure. If you get hung up on pleasure, you're doomed. If you pursue joy, you will find everlasting happiness. You know you are truly alive when you care for every living thing. One day soon, it will be the norm to view others not as competition, but gifts to share the gorgeous planet with, and we will not be able to imagine the loss of but one, even if it's an annoying gnome called Lipso. <laughs> and, it's and it's signed Wilfred Dion, the greatest uh, alchemist in the world. More like the shittiest. No, it's not. <laughs> But, but, yeah. but right, right so from what is written right down, you can that. guess that uh, the guy that wrote this has up. some kind of personal vendetta against a gnome named Lipso. No, right <laughs> above that, you see a scratched out name that said, written by Lipso Drofen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's a small little van at the and end then it's about scratched how this gnome and it says, keeps... <laughs> Stay out of my personal diary, Lipso. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is mine. Uh, <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> There's some sort of uh, childish argument going on in the book as I uh, as I read it. Yeah, from this book you have learned how to create and strengthen health potions. Hmm. Unfortunately, okay. there's not much else you can learn in it. Mm. Except unless for I meaning learn... of life, of course. Unless, of course, unless I uh, learn the more basics of alchemy apart from engineering, like I know, then I won't be able to understand most of the things in here. But I still keep it around. Mm. So yeah, uh, he, basically at the end the guy describes how he found happiness through his work. Basically, that's about it. And why uh, he f considers himself blessed and wants to give back to those around him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's about the book. What are you guys doing at breakfast? I assume you're all eating and stuff. Uh, uh, Tali and mm -hmm. O'Sullivan are missing. Yeah, it's Vic, was, Vic was up early, so I'm outside of the tavern repairing my armor with a hammer I borrowed. Shirtless, of course. Oh, <laughs> perfect. You see that some of the village ladies that are still single, like, are stealing glances at you while they're quote-unquote uh, gardening. As they should. I'm <laughs> also, like, glancing at you. Okay, that's <laughs> weird. 
Hey, never baby. seen those. Some like damn herbs. <laughs> These sort of effects, like yeah, wow, yeah, I understand. It's cute. It's like uh, Vic is the father and Amos the child, and they're spending. Time. Whoa! Hold no, that's <laughs> not at all what it's like. <laughs> Remember, Jesus internet. Christ. But the video, whatever. But yeah. Amo is not a child anyway. So he's just short. So a child. Uh. Yes, I'm racist. Uh, by the way, I know this is near the here or there, but who was clapping? I uh, mean, and I wasn't <laughs> clapping. Oh, were you headbutting the wall or something? Sure. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, what are you guys doing? Tali's yeah. kind of busy right now. Yeah, <laughs> failing at life. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I guess so... I have to... Literally guess... failing at life. I'm guessing after a few minutes, I think we would notice that huh, those two didn't come down. Yeah, you would notice because suddenly there's an earthquake. Wait, what? Okay. Yep, earthquake. Village is shaking. Why? What the hell? What the hell was that? Oh, by the way, O'Sullivan, are you still in the forest with Tali? I assume so. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're about to find out why there's an earthquake. Oh my god. Because. <laughs> O'Sullivan. You are not alone! Bum, bum, bum. The thousand year old bum, question bum, 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 bum. is finally answered. We're not alone. <laughs> what? That looks cool. Uh, yeah. What is That's this? the thing oh. that got kind of drawn to Tali failing. It's like a ridiculously oh. ugly fairy dragon. <laughs> but fairy hey. dragons are already ugly. Wow. No, they're not. Yeah. O'Sullivan, yeah, whatever. You're in the forest alone. The cocoon is fine, but this thing materialized and it looks hungry. It notices uh -oh. you first. What do you do? Oh no! I'm sorry. <clears throat> you better be sorry. I'll kill that thing. <laughs> there. Boy. Can I have two bonds for the same person? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, yeah, it's kind of coming straight for you. Uh, no joke. Invisibility on the cocoon. Such a bro. Okay. What happens? Uh, <laughs> minus one of the spells for the day. <laughs> Uh, while invisibility is active, don't you get some kind of minus as well? No. Uh, no. Oh, okay then. I don't okay. think with invisibility. No, minus one for the rest of the day. Okay, the cocoon is invisible. The monster looks confused for a moment, but it still sees you, so it's uh, charging right for you. Oh, there's oh. still something there. <laughs> what? Uh, so it's still a bit away, right? Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Fireball! Okay. Oh. Of course. The answer to all questions. Fireball. Oh shit! Oh, oh no. shit! Oh. You forget fireball for the day. Oh no. Wow. If I only you hadn't taken that minus one, bro. As as you. I still would have failed. As no, you, it's a seven. As you cast your fireball, the flames don't come out right, and whatever comes out right is immediately extinguished because that thing literally spits out uh, water, high pressured water in your direction from its mouth and it slams right into you. What a jerk. So <laughs> the water deals 4 damage to you and you're knocked down on your ass and it's still coming for you. But why? Can, can we uh, try to see what the fuck is going on? Yes. Well, I'd, I'd say since it's pretty near to the village, you'd probably hear noises and tremors and such, so you've got a good idea what's going on out there. Something's not right. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm... Start moving into that direction. Aren't you sure? By the way, Vic, I'd say that by now you have managed to fix your armor. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a fast worker. <laughs> okay. I, uh, pull out a scroll of sleep and cast it. <laughs> on the creature? Yes! Amazing. Wow! Okay, roll for it. But it's a scroll. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh no, wait, it's a scroll, yeah. Oh my god. Really? <laughs> You're the best. Let me see. <laughs> on the creature? No, on me! <laughs> it's like you expected me to cast Go it to out. sleep, okay. Sullivan, go to sleep, so, it's a dream. Uh, do you want to use your magic ability to double the effect? Why would I need to double the effect? I'm just asking. Uh, keep in mind that your scroll of sleep cannot just do whatever the fuck you want, because this is a very huge creature. So the effect, even though it will work on it, it may not have the desired effect that you're looking for. What Could would get the desired tired? effect be? Well, you want sleep. to put that thing to sleep permanently, right? Or just no. buy some time? Buy some time! Okay, so you don't want to maximize the effect? No! Okay, so you cast the scroll and the creature suddenly starts, uh, starts uh, wobbling left and right and it collapses, it starts snoring. But it seems like a very shallow sleep, it's gonna wake up soon. Okay, um... I know, I can feel where the... I can feel where my invisibility is coming from, right? Yes, well, you can kind of make it out from the ground, so... Because the ground is kind of like vines are kind of... were inter intertwined into the cocoon, so you can kind of guess where the cocoon is. Oh, right so now. I can't move the cocoon. No, the cocoon is big, you can't move it, and it's kind of... Uh, like bolted to the ground because it's kind of like um, veins that connect the earth and Tali together. You cannot move the cocoon. God damn it. And uh, uh, I am assumed that Tali has warned you, but if somebody interrupts the ritual, she might die. Oh, I did not warn him about that. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> of course I remember, not. I can't remember who I casted telepathy on. Uh, I'd say that during the night the, the thing just stopped working. Nah. I think you cast it on Tally. Yeah, you did. You cannot communicate with her. She's in deep Stop. slumber. She cannot Stop. hear you. I'm still, of course Come to her in the dream. Inception yeah. that shit. You suck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I contact spirits. Okay. Bro. Then I forget it. <laughs> I, I, I summon the spirit of water. Okay, the spirit of water is here. You can uh, one of the spirits of water is here, and you you can ask questions. Go for it. Does that have any weaknesses? Yes, <laughs> it's uh, that uh, that is a uh, a water-based creature. It's uh, very weak to fire. Its most uh, weak area what? is what? the belly part. What? What? How is a water-based creature weak to fire? Water extinguishes fire! <laughs> no! Fire extinguishes water! <laughs> Duh! <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that if there's a huge forest fire and it starts raining, the fire is still gonna be there for a while. <laughs> Basically, it says that its uh, tummy area near the chest is its weak spot. And that's where it's very weak to fire. Well, it's kind yeah. of sleep Got right now. Fireball! Well, you forgot Fireball, so too bad. I know, right? <laughs> You're rolling. Who's so shocking it? Oh boy. It says that uh, the gills are also weak areas around the neck and around the arms. Finally, something useful. Uh, <laughs> am I there yet? So, if you guys were running towards the scene, I'd say that you'd probably arrive in a minute or two, so you should be there by now. The creature is uh, starting to wake up soon, though. Just... Uh, I'm suspecting something here. Is Amo recognizing that thing? Uh, will... no. Okay. You don't recognize it. I... It kind of looks like the uh, thing I described earlier to, from my You world. can spot lore still. Yeah, you can still that's spot what, That's what I was about to do, I want to spout lore. Okay, roll. Oh my Nine. god. Right, let's see... Can I spot lore about something I don't know? Yeah, you can. That's what What's he's doing right gonna now. Need, you're gonna need to say, like, how you found it. Uh. Yeah. Uh, the GM may ask you, how do you know this? Tell them the truth now. So that's how what's, what he means. Okay, so... O'Sullivan. You know that this uh, type of creature usually exists like uh, on the upper world. You know that it existed like uh, deep uh, below the 
uh, the seas and the oceans. Like this is a deep water creature. It's blind. Absolutely blind. It only relies on uh, sound, on touch and other uh, senses to make out where its prey is. So basically when you started raising noise that's how it knew where you were and it, it went straight for you. That's why it looked confused when you casted magic and it verberated next to you. Even It couldn't sense the cocoon but when you ver verberated that it sensed there's something there. For well, now it can't sense it anymore. Oh so man. A, yeah, Wait, this is a deep sea that type again. creature. This is a deep, uh, deep sea type creature, so it's very hard for it to survive on land. And oh, it's, it it's need, completely it blind. Pressure. Basically, since there's no water around it right now, it's probably not gonna be able to burst out water bullets much like, uh, like before. You know, it's not gonna be able to do that much. <clears throat> Have you ever seen what happens to a deep sea fish that comes to the surface? Yeah, it kind of doesn't they, go well. They ex they uh, their insides rupture. Yeah, I think that's why it looks like that. So yeah, how do you know about <laughs> this? Uh, how do you know about this this uh, deep sea creature? I read a lot of books, man. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. You are mm. still enough. That's bro. gonna be the answer to all your questions. Bro. No. Yeah. So oh, this thing is blind. Be. That's Sometimes all you know won't. about it. This thing is blind. You could have said I once ate it in a restaurant. <laughs> I once ate it in a. <laughs> yeah, you could have said that. Totally. It tastes, it tastes a lovely, but I noticed a few oh, things. No, and you absorbed its knowledge or something? So yeah, uh, now that you guys are uh, uh, spending time discussing like what the fuck this thing is, it sta it starts growling and waking up. It's back on its feet and it's coming for you. Magic I missile at his gills. Okay. Don't. Fuck with me now. Oh my god. Wow. You forget magic Jesus. missile as well. Oh. I'm screwed, guys. All his, all his attacks eyes. are going. But thanks to you trying to cast magic, it, not, it now knows where you are and it's coming right for you. And it's almost a few steps away from you now. Uh, Don't offensive spells cancel invisibility? Uh, no. Well, when it's they on cancel him. cancel if I'm the one attacking. Yeah. I will... You and know. since oh, you guys right. haven't seen the cocoon, you have no idea where Tali is. Yep. Mm. So if Sullivan goes, Quickly! She's inside its belly! Take her out! How would you react? <laughs> <laughs> Very soon, I may need to, uh, like, cancel my invisibility. Uh-oh. Spell defense. So yeah, I will run away. <laughs> That's a good plan. Or at least out of it. Okay. So what are the rest of you guys gonna come? By the way, O'Sullivan, since this thing is thrashing about, it may step on the cocoon as it's coming closer. Maybe you should tell the others to protect that area. Also well, tell uh, that it's don't blind. me the picture, DM. Lead it away from there! <laughs> Why well, I assume I run away from the cocoon? Because I'm smart, God, this not stuff. an yeah. idiot. Since you're making sounds, it continues to follow after you. So, what the hell is O'Sullivan doing with that thing? You should probably say Fine. that he's playing tag. He's playing tag. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think we should help him. Uh, by the <laughs> way, O'Sullivan, something uh, you didn't know because you didn't throw well enough. You uh, you realize that this creature actually has a very long tongue and it's now snapping out and it's trying to grab one of your legs. Would Are you like gonna try to, to avoid uh, danger? Would you like me to defy danger? If you want. Would you like to defy danger? Would you like to defy danger? Damn right. Would you like the danger not to do any damage to you? Roll plus dex. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'll, I'll avoid it this time. Oh, thank goodness. So barely. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. You're hmm. not doing well today. <laughs> no, we're not. That means, that means I'm going to level. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is not a fail, so no XP this time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is what can happen. Either, uh, you stumble, hesitate, or flinch. Here are your options. Uh, you can either 
fall face first and the creature is gonna like uh, catch you without any resistance you can either uh, jump to the side and barely avoid it but you're gonna drop your spell book on the ground Why and without it you can myself? cast or or let's see what's your third option or you can uh, jump to the right side where you won't uh, miss out on any of uh, you won't have to drop your book you won't be in danger but you're gonna lead the creature back towards the liwa and the cocoon i suspect we're running towards ev the, him right now is it uh, Vic? you I take the front face first <laughs> okay so you choose the worst out my face plant <laughs> as you face plant you feel its slimy tongue Grip your legs tightly together and it yanks on you. Spell defense. Uh, how does spell defense work? Isn't it against magic whatever, only? No. Whatever ma whatever damage is gonna happen, as soon as I uh, as soon as I'll take the damage, I'll negate at least one of it. So it's basically to negate damage, nothing else. Yeah. Okay. So. As you use that, you're flying through the air. They can see you. Wee! <laughs> I'm not yelling wee. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> Suddenly they see the monster go. 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 And it's loud swallows of Sullivan. Your okay. spell defense manages to protect you from the uh, acid and the, ins the inside juices of its belly for a while. And now you're inside the creature. All right, can it's I like, do a thing? Yeah, it's okay. like, save him, save him, you save guys him. You literally see the the creature swallow Sullivan hole. Okay, so I charge at the thingy and I want to do a running slide under its head and slash its neck throat. Right. So first of all, roll a uh, roll plus dex to see if you can pull off that acrobatic move. Oh good god, I nearly a slide on the move. Well, he's in full armor, dude. What do you want? <laughs> ah, right. Sorry. Yeah, okay. but now, roll there's a no bolt. Touch. On armor for one. Damn! Nice. Okay, I'd say since the second one was good enough, you managed to pull it off sort of okay. Right. Do you want to deal extra damage? So that opens me up for uh, an attack. Counter attack, yeah. Uh, no, I'll just try to slash. Yeah, that's fine. Nice. I'll nice. Take so you want, you're basically cutting at its belly and throat, right? As you slide. Through. No, I want to cut its throat like open as I slide under it. it Horizontally or vertically? Since you're sliding, I'd say it's uh, vertically, right? Mm, that'd be uh, best. No, horizontally. Like uh, throat slit like, on a person. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you're sliding from left to right, not from, yeah, not yeah, from yeah, up yeah. to bottom. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you manage to slice the bottom of its neck, and actually that's a critical blow to it, because it doesn't matter if it's weak or not, that kind of damage to a throat to any type of creature like this is pretty severe. Ow. And O'Sullivan pops out. No. <laughs> He's what ends up happening is this creature takes double damage, and not, that's not the worst of it. Water and blood both spill out. It can't use water uh, bullets anymore because it lost its ability, pretty much. You can't, it can't even make a sack. sound. This thing uh, <laughs> almost lost its head and it's wobbling and it collapses, but it's not dead. It's starting to get up, but it looks in pretty bad shape. Fuck! Almost right. lost his head. I'm not a dog. <laughs> I guess if it's on its side and Alexander would dash in as well, he's going to attempt to go over Vic and slash at the belly to get O'Sullivan out. Okay, roll for it. You're all plus dex, right? Go. Oh, I, oh, wanna, I want to help him with this endeavor by casting telekinesis to provide force. <laughs> telekinesis? <laughs> but, provide yeah, force. it's the new spell you know, I your yeah, help I know, would just. I don't think you can use it like that. You know, your help could just be putting your hands on the be creature's belly to give an outline so I don't kill you. <laughs> just your hands. No, you might actually stab me if I do that. No, so, okay, Alexander, roll. 
Right. <laughs> Since this creature is kind of out of it right now, Vic like pretty much wrecked it. So yeah. it's gonna be pretty it's easy to do what you want with it. Okay, roll damage. Do what you dex. want. Why are you rolling dex? Because it's ah, got precision. Sick damage. <laughs> uh, you poke the creature's belly, and Sullivan, uh, because he's on the inside, he just sees the belly wiggle a little bit. He doesn't even <laughs> understand what's going on. Oh, he sees Alexander go. I. Alexander just goes, I freaking hate this sword. <laughs> alright. Uh, alright, as it's like wobbling, I want to step on its head, push its head on the ground, and stab my sword through it. Okay, hack and slash then. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's still it's, it's still thriving. <laughs> it's not yet dead. Alright, sure. Nine, okay, no do damage. Yet. Do, 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 do. So, okay, you stab into it, but the upper part of its, uh, uh, its head, as you can imagine, it's uh, tougher than the squishy sides on the bottom. Uh, it, uh, your sword pins off its uh, thick scales, and it it uh, wiggles out of out of it, uh, out of the hold, and it bites into you with its teeth. Sure. Dealing. I sound like a magic player, sure. Sure. <laughs> Getting 11 sure. damage, and this one wow. is pierced. Yeah, Holy is shit! Not protecting you from those fangs. Are you kidding me? Nope. Alright, bro. 11 oh, damage. He got, he got 9, uh, and if I got bonuses, shouldn't he get a bonus? What do you mean? Oh, like, yeah, that's I got true. bonuses to attack its belly because of its sheer size and wobbliness. If he gets even a plus no, one, no, 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 that's not from why. That circumstance. After Vix attack, the creature was dazed, and you used that attack. Now it's getting, now it's coming around. You got one chance for that. You cannot uh, do uh, it. Uh, I would like to do something. Okay, go for it. I would like to try. And... Let's see, do it. No, I got rid of that dagger, didn't I? Yes, I did get rid of that dagger. God damn. What would would adventuring gear? Can I discern realities to see if my adventuring gear would hold anything useful? Uh, let me. For think. my what current would, predicament. What <laughs> would be in the adventuring gear? Mm, what would make sense? A knife. Uh, useful mundane items. Mm. Kitchen knife. Such as chalk poles, spikes, rope, etc. Et yeah, a spike that's usually used to pitch tents and such, you'd have a spike, so you have a sharp weapon. It says etc. Why would I just want a spike? What if it's got like something else, like like a filleting knife? Well, I don't know, tell me, what else is in the adventuring gear does, that makes a, sense? A filleting knife. Well, fine, whatever. The spike is pretty much the same thing, but okay. Yeah, but maybe I won't shashimi. Maybe I won't shashimi. You're gonna do the same damage or class damage anyway, right? Yeah. So. But it's the way I've got to play. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm ruining your immersion. It's okay. You are! <laughs> yeah, man, it's so immersive to be inside the belly of a beast that's supposed to be, like, in deep sea. I hate you. <laughs> okay, so are you gonna slash at it with it? What are you doing? Yes. Do I do? Need to roll considering I am. No, roll damage. Your damage is a 1d4 from H, right? Yes. Free. Okay, so you stab it from the inside. Let's see. You take a bit of acid damage from the belly, you take free damage. Aww. So that thing's got quite the tummy ache now. Hmm. And uh, since it's uh, it took a pretty big beating, it doesn't seem to want to fight anymore. It starts to retreat. Uh -oh. oh no! Before, can I attack it? Sure. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. As it like stands up and tries to retreat, I go under it and try to cut its head clean off where I slashed before. Okay. Hack and slash. I, uh... All right. Oh shit! Go. Do you want to do some damage? Yeah, I'll, I'll do double yeah. damage. Okay, add the one d six then. Oh my god! Yes. Right. So you, wow, that was pathetic. Ugh. On whose part? 
on its path. Okay. <laughs> because you back to hell, got you so much knowledge animal. about it and you immediately used it, that that was just not fucking fair. <laughs> well, that's what Sullivan's job is. <laughs> I would have went for its throat anyway, I think. I got the Because it looks cool. Amo but didn't even went... get to do shit. So I got I a little distracted. I had mm. to speak uh, outside a little. So what ends I... up happening, this creature entirely loses its head and it's down. Sweet. Yeah, I... it's <laughs> just down. I kind of wanted to like throw the dagger inside his belly so Sullivan could like use it. To... Yeah, that <laughs> would have been cool, but dude, Vic just yeah. wrecked that thing. Yeah, but I, I got a little distracted. <laughs> Alexander poked it. <laughs> One damage. The yeah. What if what if that was the difference between life and death, you know? <laughs> yeah, you never I just know. I actually suspect I did about two damage given it was a weak point, but such damage. Yes, you actually <laughs> deal double damage there as well. Oh. Ping So yeah, I, so, I yeah, well, so on, you're uh, inside the belly of these this uh, dead beast now, by the way. It's like Hmm, can I start just kind of open at this point with my sword still stuck in it and get yeah. uh, Sullivan out? It's yeah. like, I, cut, I start cutting it open, it's like, are you in there? <laughs> Sullivan! Fuck you. <laughs> He's fine. I reach in, try grabbing him, putting him out. <laughs> just covering him in bile, blood, and whatever I, I else. Try to, I try to get as much of the nasty ass. <laughs> <laughs> he like stumbles, hugs him. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> uh, I attempt to hold him off. <laughs> Alexander, you take five points of embarrassment damage. What's no, wrong? I said. It's yeah, fine, if you I get, helped If him. you get him embarrassed enough and shamed enough, you can kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I die of embarrassment. It's like, oh, it's like. It's like, I, I rub my head, it's like, uh, um, okay. Why was that thing here? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, nothing. What? It's like, it's like, it's like, I, I what slowly do you walk nothing? back over to the now oh. visible cocoon. Oh yeah, now it's visible, by the way. It, been, it, was, it had been visible as soon as I had gotten swallowed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Alexander's a bit confused. It's like, okay. Um, what's this? So he was going through puberty. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. nothing, don't touch it. Wait. <laughs> Where's Talila? Um, what? <laughs> she was with you. You're the Where's worst liar. Where's Talila? <laughs> uh, she's not in this cocoon, if that's what you're asking. Oh, is it? Why is, is she in the cocoon? <laughs> I said she's not in here, you idiot. Can't you listen? You're a horrible liar. <laughs> Why is I'm she in the cocoon? I'm not trying to lie. <laughs> There's a difference between being bad at it and mm. not even trying. <laughs> at least you're smart enough this time. Uh, Why is she in the cocoon? What's going on? Some, some elf thing. Some. Wait, do elves do this? <laughs> I don't think elves do this. I don't know. I don't I know. I've never seen an elf do this. I want to spout lore about this. Uh, oh let me god. see if you can actually, because I think. Oh, that... oh my god! <laughs> yes, you can! <laughs> I know oh, everything. Talking? I'm friends with a druish, with a druid elf. I'm pretty sure I can spout lore about it. So, no matter how you know it, it doesn't matter. You know this. Like, this is basically some kind of maturing rituals, a ritual that all druids go through at certain points in their life. And it's uh, very important for their community as a whole because through it they grow closer to nature and they grow stronger. Yeah, Some sometimes of the... too close to nature, like <laughs> being yeah. eaten. Okay, and uh, here's so... the thing, like, during this period they're incredibly vulnerable. That's why usually they never do it by themselves. They, all, uh, themselves. they always have people to look after them. And uh, also, like, while it is possible to get grain power from this, it's possible also to get themselves killed, as you've noticed. 
<laughs> because it draws it... a lot of unwanted attention to them by strange creatures. Uh, also, the thing is like some druids, like it's different for all druids, but they experience this in their lifetime through different periods and definitely like more than once. Like the stronger the druid is and the better conditions that they've been exposed to, the more they go through this process and grow stronger. Usually the common interval for these rituals is about once every 10 years. Uh, Talila for you it's been a little bit longer because uh, obvious reasons. Is she, uh, is this druid, elf <laughs> druid, about to not be small anymore? <laughs> uh, you're not sure, but uh, uh, thanks to the lore you already have, like you see that the cocoon process is going well. From this point on, she's probably not going to have any more problems as long as the cocoon is kept intact. But uh, definitely it's not going to be attacked again by monsters. Yeah. So we're going to have to protect the evil way. Do they like... <laughs> Well, because if the villagers it. come and poke it, that's probably bad. No, <laughs> don't let. Them yeah, we're poke. all like, sh we're like sharing. It's like, don't touch the cocoon. Yeah, from like this point on, she should be fine. Also, O'Sullivan, another thing that you know about them, druids that go through this process uh, too many times, eventually let go of their uh, emotions and attachments to other uh, species, uh, like, and uh, get more attuned with nature and become one with it. And they be, they you go are a old tree and now. distant. I was time. about to say, do they become a tree at the end? <laughs> <laughs> I actually suspect they turn into dryads instead of a druid. That would make no. more sense. They turn into a like tree. A they basically distance yeah, themselves dryad. from other life forms and become more attuned and one with nature. So a tree. tree person. That's what a dryad is. But anyway, that's not important. Uh, it's, it's like, okay, so it's may be safe to leave the cocoon alone. I assume, there. by the way, that O'Sullivan shares this with you. I hope so. Well, I asked him, and he did sprout law, and he's spouting okay, law then. to us. Okay. <laughs> by the way, O'Sullivan, but... how do you know about this? Is Do you all know all this from Tali, or do you have other sources? Books, but mostly from Tali. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's actually a few druids in this world as well, but they're very rare, so there are some books on them. That's mm -hmm. why I was curious, would you know this? Okay, so you do. It's like, right, so what's now? Okay. What's gonna happen now? It's like, is it, so it's gonna be safe, right? Like, completely? Or should we at least have somebody here to guard it? We should probably stay here. Uh, Plexi says, uh, well, since you guys aren't going anywhere, I I can stay here. He's got a wagon full of books with him. It's like, where did you get those? Never mind. It's like, uh, but you don't understand the concept of protection. Yes, but I understand the concept of being a wanted fugitive. I can't return to the village. Oh God. Wait, what? Yeah, he, he doesn't know about personal property, so he may have broken in and stolen those books. <laughs> Wait, no, bad Prex, no, Prex, you're, you're kidding, right? I'm a machine. You've kidded I don't before. joke. Oh, he, said, uh, he blames uh, those moments where he was joking on some weird circuits in his brain because he, he totally was fucked up if you <laughs> I just hope nobody knows you're with us. Right, I made sure Stay to tell here. them the time with you so you can share my responsibility. Oh. I've got to go back to town. <laughs> it's a village, Alexander. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'll carry the trophy we got to the town. <laughs> that seems smart. They'll love us. Hey, hey you know what? We, we could just say we protected Maybe you shouldn't fuck with us. <laughs> you, know, you know what? Maybe we should take it back. I bet they would love some of the meat. No, I don't take the whole thing. I, like, stick its head on a spear and... Or not a spear, a stick and carry it. <laughs> oh yeah, the head is kind of big considering it was large enough to swallow. So... I have plus three strength. Yeah, okay. And O'Sullivan is a gnome. <laughs> By the way, like, since he drops like, the books over there him. so he can start reading, you can actually use the wagon. Hmm. Sure. Uh. <laughs> it's like, hmm, uh -huh. I think he stole the wagon because the only place with a lot of books is the library. <laughs> so he couldn't have stolen all the books, right? I mean... That's actually pretty guy... impressive. 
The guy let him borrow books before, so there's no way you would steal from him and piss him off, right? Right? Uh. I mean, oh, the, just books goes seem, the books don't seem magical. They sh they seem pretty shabby. They're not definitely not from the library. Oh, okay. mm. What are they about? Pretty much everything. He's trying to learn everything about the world. Right. Ooh, Since you guys are a very bad example for him, he decided to rely on books. All right, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent. That's a great example. But anyway, since we're on the outskirts and so is the jeweler, I decide to pop by the jeweler first. He's he's at home actually. He's working on some stuff. Oh hey, you guys finally came. I thought you ditched town or something. Nah, we got stuck what? on the other side of a chasm. It's fine though. We're back now. Okay. So did you decide to head outside the jewels? Well, well, we're not going to really need them. I think we're going to need money more. Excellent, excellent. How much but do you that have? Being said... How much right. how many do you have? One second. I gotta get out my 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 wait a minute, pressure That's precise, that's not precious. Three press gems, so there's three of them. Mm-hmm. -hmm. Okay, mind if I uh, give them a quick look over once again? Yeah, okay, sure. It goes for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll take them. Nah, good. Same place as before. Grand each. Mm, well, one of them seems to be a bit shabby, so I don't think I can offer offer you a full grant for it. I'm coming with you with three gems. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. And for the shabby one, I'm gonna give you just seven hundred. Mm, I might as well keep that one then. Something nice to give to my sister. Oh, you cheapskate. You're gonna give her the shabby one. <laughs> hey. Typical Alex. Hey. <laughs> I'll keep this. Fine. Uh, I'll keep the shabby one. But okay, yeah, then. Yeah, the other two I can sell. Okay, here's 2,000 gold. He takes out from his safe 2,000 gold and counts it for you. Hey, uh, jeweler. Yes? How much for a dragon head? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> a dragon head? He like uh... need a dragon head. He's a jeweler. Uh, why would he need a why would he need a Isn't this the guy who said he was an alchemist? I don't know, stick it outside, it'll look cool. I am <laughs> sorry, but can you please remove that fish head? It smells disgusting. It's not a fish head, look at the size. It's, it's a pretty a fish. big fish, good job. I know, I mean, right? Did you, you wanna see, see the, the corpse? No! <laughs> Vic, please let me do the whole talky thing. Also, Why don't how you come sh Alexander, I'm how come you merchant. smell worse than him? Uh, that's not a topic I wish to discuss. I need a shower after this. There's a lake nearby anyway. Mm. But yeah. Well then, next time you oh. get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, he still smells worse than me, he points to him, Sullivan. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, you wouldn't happen, you said you're an alchemist before, you wouldn't happen to have uh, <laughs> travel tools, would you? That you would be willing to sell? Uh, well, I'm not really an alchemist, but I double here and there. Yeah, I've got some basic tools, what do you need? Basic tools? <laughs> Just, <laughs> like, like, for yeah. what? Like, do you need for uh, repairing equipment? Uh, do you need for uh, uh, precious gems and uh, materials? Do you need them um, for uh, armors, weapons, for what? Uh, repairing equipment. Small hammer and stuff. I can easily fashion these to be able to help repair armor and weapons. Mm, a good size hammer, though, would do better. Well, I think I have a, a novice toolkit that I can part with, but uh, tools are very expensive around here since we don't have mm. much. Yeah, I did notice that no, you don't have much actual metal. They're not made out of gold, by the way, are they? No, of course not. That would be silly. G hey, you say that's silly, but you have nails of gold in your buildings. Let's just say them. we were desperate. Fine, fair enough. But yeah, I agree. I guess they are rather rare. rare. <laughs> So, so, tell you what, he scratches me. his head. Um, 
Mm, tell you what, for a uh, for a thousand and five hundred, I'll part with them. <laughs> I can't afford that. Yeah, I thought you'd react like that. Like I said, those are pretty rare, man. I can't just let you have them. Like, mm. without a good price. I guess. Damn it. And the other guy doesn't have any tools. Why is it so hard to get tools in this damn underground? I should have bought my travel <laughs> kit. We're not underground, are we? Sorry, man. Yeah, well, we're we underground. Are. We'll always be underground. God damn it. I feel like we went outside when we exited the underground city. I thought so no. too. No. <laughs> no, he described like so there's a crack, like a ceiling and a uh, light yeah. comes to a crack. Uh, yeah, exactly. Honestly, I'm surprised you guys didn't check more uh, when you were in the temple of the tempest because you were actually still underground and yet sky, light. Oh, what's going on? Well, with the right yeah, treasure that's what we did. and. Like molecules, you can't have a sky like underground. No, but so, yeah, anyway, the that's guy what... says like if you want tools, you're gonna have to cough up a hefty sum from. <sighs> uh, well, I but... guess that idea is out of a window. I can't go spending that much without everyone's permission. Uh, don't worry, I'll find a way to get tools. No, okay then. But like, if this gold is we're gonna only use it in this town, maybe or. Well, since you can access the library from everywhere, apparently, you're gonna have use for it later as well. Ah, okay, never mind. So, uh, that being said, um, there wouldn't anyone in town want a short bow, would they? Uh, doubt it. We are not really huntsmen. We're more like farmers around here. Yeah. Why would you farmers? Guess. Why would you want but... a short bow? Well, it's just I don't have any use for it, and the wood can't really be repurposed, so... Hey, actually, that reminds me. The arrows have metal tips. Do they? I thought they were all wooden arrows. That's no, it's straight up wooden the... without any metal, because uh, materials like that were hard to find. Wait, no. The arrows are from the underground prison that I said were from. They were used to hunt these things, so they have... Metal tips, you know, for breaking okay. the armored hides. Okay. So? Well, metal's very rare here. I'm yeah, sure but they're... just a handful of metal is not gonna make much of a difference. They can make actual nails. Actual yeah, hinges. Yeah, about maybe what, 50, 60 nails, if they're lucky? Still, it's what you wouldn't have had anyway. I'm just wondering yeah, if anybody they're wants not it. I'm not even asking. Not a... That's not the kind of thing that they're interested in. That's just not enough to make a difference. You heck just I, I have... uses free shit. I have extra <laughs> rapiers. Can they like, use that, maybe? Dude, you can't. Heck... You cannot get a lot of materials from those things. You can't use them as bargaining chips. Actually, um, <laughs> I want to. I want to check something. <laughs> I w does the cre I was wondering, like, if uh, we go outside, it's like, okay, we're. It's like, thanks to your patronage and stuff. You know, Bye guys. Jewelers. See ya. And I want to basically hide a little and take out the credit chip from one of the tubes and I want to read the back of it. See what services he, like, does. You can't read anything. The chip doesn't have anything written on it. It's just a white chip. What kind of chip is this? What a cheap ass chip. <laughs> Who doesn't even put their business name and shit on it? Gah. These are just for the special merch. customers, so he doesn't need advertising. Hmm. I better go and ask him. <laughs> I want to know if there's some sort of storage. He already told you what it's about. It can, you can use gold to purchase and sell like items, and that's it. Basic it. items what for adventures. We... Mm. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'm gonna literally just take off the string from the... Actually, that's a good point. I'm going to separate the metal from the arrows and the string from the bow and basically use the, um, I wood. It's called wood. I, yeah, Ashton, it's called wood it's in everyday life. I'm going to basically use that as, in my venture pack, as basically wooden tinder. In other words, I want to okay. restock a charge by using it. 
Okay. Is that all right? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I do that, and I have some extra material now. Which is good. So yeah, <laughs> while Tali is uh, taking a deep sleep, what are the rest of you guys gonna do? By the way, did you just leave her alone in the forest? <laughs> <laughs> no, they left, me, they left me with Plex, yeah. Oh yeah, right, never mind, I forgot. So yeah, what are you guys gonna do for a while? Uh, I can... Um, what are you buy... talking about? I can't go with them. I can buy like uh, things like weapons from the library guy. Yes. I want to buy a sword. Okay. Wait, you okay. tried this before. Uh, Remember, we can no just magical uh, tools. spare the whole conversation and stuff. Just you can buy only regular gear. You can't buy magical stuff. Just a normal sword, like. Okay. Uh, look up how sword. much it costs and deduce, deduce that from your gold, and you can have a sword. Uh, I suspect you're using yeah. a credit chip, right? <laughs> I, well, I have some gold on me. Yeah, okay. But I, well, uh, fuck, where is the PDF? <laughs> right, uh, Alexander, can you help him with that while I talk to the other guys? Right, what are the rest of you guys going to be doing? Like, you'll be spending a day or two more in the village. If you want to do something specific, now's your chance. Yeah, if I'll you go to the RP, library. If you want to do something else... Okay, you wanna go to the library. What about you, Sullivan? I thought I was still with Tally. Oh, okay, then you, uh, oh, Sullivan, you can have a conversation with Plexi if you're interested, <laughs> because he's there too. Right, Vic, what do you wanna do in the library? Uh, I wanna bring the dragon head with me. Okay. It's not a dragon, it's a fish. He it's says, a dragon head, as I said. He says, you're not uh, there, Alex? He says that uh, he's interested in the thief, but that's about it. Do you, do you wish to have a, a book book access in in uh, exchange for the thief of that creature? Uh, I'll take a magical item. Ah, oh, that's what? a shame. Those thief are armor piercing. You, he doesn't have magical item, items for sale. <sighs> what kind of wizard are you? I'm not wizard? a wizard. What? I'm a scholar. Whoever said he was a wizard? Uh -oh. uh. I always thought he was a wizard. Okay. You assume. <laughs> Yes. You assume too much. I'm a scholar, young one. <sighs> All right. What books? Well, you tell me. I've got books on everything. What are you interested in? I'm not, I mean, I was assuming you'd sell me a magic item. You know what? Fuck this. I go outside and stick it in the ground in front of the village. Fuck that. <laughs> ah. Go to the uh, bar and drink juice or something juice <laughs> how mm -hmm. mainly by the well, way yeah I'm not some of the guys drunk. uh from last night are recovering from hangover so they join you from some juice by the way yeah i tell them how i killed uh mon or we killed the monster yeah they're pretty interested to hear about that story actually mm -hmm. by the way as i was saying since he stuck it in him like outside the village and it's like i was off to flip in get his sword alex is waiting around for a bit because what's my next plan yeah, I thought so. Yeah, it's like... He's outside, he sees the head, it's like... Huh. And I'm gonna check over its teeth. Are they straight or curved? Curved. Mm, they're not gonna make very good arrow heads. Is there anything I would be able to use them for? Well, so considering they're uh, that they're the teeth of a deep water creature, they're pretty big and they're pretty tough. Mm, As a material. A I'm gonna take out my uh, little material gathering dad dagger and start taking them out. Okay. Uh, if you collect all the teeth, that's gonna be one weight. Okay. Like, actually, for all the materials that you have right now, just write them all down under one weight. Yeah, okay. Teeth. Right, so is there anything else you guys want to do while waiting for Tali yes. to wake up? I do. Oh, okay. Hang on. Deep water teeth. Nice. What about you, there Sullivan? You're just sitting in the forest with the robot who's reading. You want to talk with him? The robot is reading? Yeah, he's sitting next to Tali's cocoon and he's reading books. What are you reading? I'm uh, 
reading uh, a historical novel. And then he he throws it away because he's done. I'm reading a romance novel. He throws it away. I'm reading a mystery novel. And he continues <laughs> like that. Why do you keep throwing them away? Once I collect all the data inside, they're worthless. To you, yes, but not to anyone else. He doesn't know how to react <laughs> to that. There are others who haven't acquired that knowledge yet. How is that any of my concern? Hoover. <laughs> what? Is it the sound of a Hoover? It's a Hoover. He means a vacuum. vacuum. Vacuum cleaner. <laughs> but he's being a retard. I'm being British. Flipping the under fools. God. Uh -huh. But yeah. Hmm? Uh he it's... can't see the number of the max load. It's What's just above your gear. Like you have to do it by manually. Like it should be calculated already. Yeah, it should be calculated, you just need to add it up. Anyway, we'll worry about that after the session, don't worry about it now. <sighs> right, so... Okay. O'Sullivan, is there anything else you want to talk with the machine, trying to explain to it, or...? Uh, I... I'd like to explain him, uh, the value of knowledge. <laughs> uh, he, he says that he understands, since knowledge is how he perceives the world, it's important to collect as much as possible. Then why would you throw away receptacles for knowledge? If it's valued, if it's valuable to you, then it would be valuable to others. Momentary value. Yes, Monetary. but uh, once I acquire the knowledge, I have no use for it. Uh, if others do not possess that knowledge, then I become more valuable. <laughs> I never said give it away for free. <laughs> Books are temporary mediums that get destroyed easily. My mind is a safer place for such knowledge. Then what would be wrong with selling it? I have no understanding of currency and material needs. You should have an understanding of it. Having a need for it is totally different. I Good understand one. the basic logic behind it. But I have no use for it. As such, I have ignored the concepts behind it. What I need, I can simply take. Boy, aren't you just a ray of sunshine? <laughs> that is incorrect. My, uh... My, okay, uh... Okay, I, I, I will explain what sarcasm is to him. <laughs> Uh, he says, I know the world, I don't understand the concept. I know, I will explain it to him. However, I will probably be stuck there explaining it to him, and t Tally will awaken. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like O'Sullivan would spend two days doing that and nothing else. I can actually see it. We're gonna and since the robot is here. a fucking robot, he's just gonna stand there and listen to him. Mm. Ah, you give me knowledge. Ah, very good. So yeah, in those two days, is there anything else you guys want to do before Talia awakens? Yes. Okay. Given that Talia's in the cocoon, I decide to start taking out the little communication gems. It's like... Oh, okay. So, oh, Sally, can you, uh, you know, help me with these? I know you explained them to me before, but I just want to make sure they're going to work. Wait, you you're done doing what? explaining to Plexi? I'm using uh, your do you gems. remember back in the city when he made you perform a ritual for communication crystals? He's asking for your help to activate them. Is he next to me? Yeah, I, yeah, I came he back. went to find you. There. I thought you were like, trying to use the crystals! And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even have one of those! I don't even have a crystal on me! By the way, when you show up, uh, the, uh, Plexi looks over to you, Alexander and says, Alexander, I am receiving knowledge. Please do not interfere. <laughs> yeah, come back later. <laughs> but, 
but uh, yeah, can we fine I'll just do it on my own fine you it's know like, what? I'm back no later. I, I, like, I like wave my hands and your crystals are working <laughs> it's like fine <laughs> no one else wants to talk to the city that's fine to me uh, hmm. Plexi mimics uh, O'Sullivan's motion as well Plexi I said yeah. don't try copying him O'Sullivan away. is being more useful. I give him priority over Alexander. Oh, you oh, never oh. ask me questions. Who you, you say is I'm fail and kick me. You are weak. And you see that weird spark in his eyes. <laughs> Screw you, you I'm like strong. Prey. Damn right he is, you hear from the tavern. <laughs> I kick your ass. A and you hear more screaming. Yeah! All his buddies agree with him. <laughs> Fine, that's it. None of you get to talk of the city. Do on my own. Exactly, like says he wow. walks towards the lake. <laughs> Rude. Okay, do you activate it? Yeah, I activate one of them, yes. Okay. As you do, they're static. And then suddenly, you start getting a picture. And you see a very confused woman. Wah, wah, what's going on? By the way, you recognize this woman. Last time you saw her, she was a bit overpowered and crazy. But now she seems just fine. It's Moira! The guy's it's wife. Hey, Grandma! What you call me, you fucking asshole? <laughs> ah! <laughs> You're so much more mean than your husband. And after I saved your life too. I, I remember one of you assholes blew my kneecaps. Uh, um, he's not <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, but he's your friend, isn't he? I should, I should turn you into you a assume. fucking You assume. It's like Alexander said he gets all wise and <laughs> stuff, and he goes, "You assume much." That's okay, I'll still turn you into a frog. Just stay there, I'll find you with magic but stuff. I saved your husband's life, please don't turn me into a frog. I'm just trying to contact my friends. I want to see how the city's doing. Yeah, well, not so great. But I did You're so friends much. with Christopher, right? Yes. Uh, she kind of uh, grabs uh, the the magic window and moves it to the side. You see a, a bed nearby and Christopher's lying in it and he's uh, covered in bandage bandages. He's still out cold. Ah. Wow, still out cold. Hmm. Well, I guess that hasn't been more... He's, the longest he's been out is two weeks. It's fine. I was hoping he's lucky be to be around. alive. Eh, uh, he's fine. Uh, yeah, by but the way, you has won't his, uh, By the way, has his girlfriend uh, come around? She doesn't yeah, blame and that's me, that's why right? you won't be okay. Oh god, she blames me. Yeah, she kinda does. But I... Cause, it's your... Cause it is your fault. <laughs> but I didn't say to do Talk... anything, he did it on his own. Talk softer, you're distracting me. <laughs> Don't interfere. <sighs> oh, that's of course she blames you. me. But he's alive. That's important. Yeah, hopefully he'll wake up soon. And then she can, then he can calm her down. By the way, as you can see, they're <sighs> somewhere uh, below ground. They're probably in some basement, so apparently they're hiding out. So I guess uh, the little uh, thing is not going well. That's one way of putting it, considering how many lives you guys ruined. We ruined no lives. Well, I didn't ruin any lives. Yes, you did. At least that's for something. <laughs> uh, <sighs> by the way, uh, Alexander, you should probably watch your back. Huh? What do you mean? Well, uh, once uh, Chris's uh, girlfriend uh, found out about what happened, she said that she's gonna find and kill you. <laughs> she can't get outside right now, the city, the door closed. Right now, she's, uh, re uh, uh, right now uh, she's leading an investigation about what happened, and uh, from what uh, she shared with me, it, uh, f it turns out that um, the, ro the, the other city guards and um, the noblemen were behind the attempted assassination. It's a really... Uh, bloody story right now. There's a revolution outside. It still hasn't stopped since you guys left. Right now she's... <laughs> uh, now, right now uh, Chris's woman is uh, leading uh, the city, uh, the city's people against the noblemen and some of the guards that are still protecting them. 
It's a uh, war out there. I wonder if once it was a good uh, once idea she to takes the city me. under control, her mission is to send out search parties to find you. I, I saved his life. I saved the city from you, actually. <laughs> That's not how she sees it. Then tell her. Why should I? I. Wow. I. Mm. Why is everybody so ungrateful towards the hero? I guess I have to put up with it. Also, you should tell that uh, guy O'Sullivan with you that uh, he should watch over his shoulder as well. The day he left the city, some mages left as well, and oh. they are gunning oh, for shit. him. Oh shit! Wait, not me too? I'm surprised. Oh, you're definitely uh, on the wanted list. She d just doesn't <laughs> know. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I was hoping I would... Uh... Well, he's... He's changed at least a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, he got uh... worse. <laughs> Actually... To be honest, you he got better since anything. he. <laughs> to be honest, he got better in Alexander's eyes because he hasn't set anyone else on fire so far. <laughs> I haven't set anyone on fire to begin with. By the way, more you interrupts you. A person. Uh, because uh, Alexander's oh. like acting like an idiot and underplaying everything, and it's obviously ticking her off because she's the one that has to deal with this bullshit apart from other people and such. She says, as thrilling as this conversation is, right now I feel like we should change locations again because I feel like the city guard will find us soon and kill us. So perhaps uh, we should leave this conversation for another time unless you have something else to say. Actually, yeah. I guess I shouldn't be messing around, but, uh, I do have an important thing to say. How is, uh, the church? The church? Uh, she thinks yeah. about it and, uh, she, uh, she kind of, like, deducts which one you mean, because there's actually just one church. It's never been that popular, especially with mages, since most of them are atheists, but whatever. So, she says, uh, the church got destroyed during the riots. Dun, dun, dun. I see. It's always the church. Uh, do you know anything about the people? Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know anything about them. Perhaps uh, Christopher's woman would know more. I was busy at the time taking care of uh, all the mages and to prevent them from joining the uh, joining the war between the civilians and the guards. I see. You know, I'm sorry about everything that happened. Yeah, well, sorry doesn't cut it. And she closes the call. Dang. Alexander's a bit pissed off again now that he's getting blamed for something he didn't do. <laughs> that girl got sass. He just... he just... just puts away the gems. Well, hopefully Christopher will awake soon, so maybe you can contact them soon. And, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe they won't be so pissed off at you anymore, who knows? <laughs> Christopher, please put things right and tell them how much of a hero I was. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he goes. Alexander goes over to where Plexi and Sullivan is, and it's like, what do you explain to him anyway? Uh, suddenly, uh, Plexi pipes up to answer instead of O'Sullivan. The concept of having tact and not interrupting others when they're busy. Yeah, ah, just, that's a strange and foreign yeah, concept I to me. I taught him that after I taught him the concept of sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, when, yeah. when O'Sullivan right. says that, Plexi looks back to him and gives him a thumbs up. <laughs>